You are all in the business of boom and bust. Technologies go boom and bust, as does the world of gaming and music. You all have this in common, which makes your industry a black swan industry. Much of the below are ideas which stem from the book entitled The Black Swan, The Impact of the Highly Improbable by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. To summarize what I mean by this, I mean that no matter what incremental effort, talent, or level of IQ that you have, it will not separate you from the pack unless you think of a way to generate an extremely unpredictable event. In the music world, Little Nas X is a black swan. Fortnite's success and the rise of online streamers like Twitch are black swans. Even social mediums like TikTok and Instagram are all examples of black swan phenomena. No business plan could predict Old Town Road, the rise of online participation in watching gaming, and or that TikTok would become a place where artists today could be discovered, bypassing the world of labels, managers, and agents, a system which has existed since the dawn of recorded music. No extra effort, IQ, and or talent could result in something that goes boom. It's merely a black swan, but there are ways to increase the ability to predict and achieve black swan moments. When something goes boom in any culture, it becomes monumentally devastating to all others competing around them. Your one move swipes the entire board clean. Winner take all. Last year at this time, Little Nas X was uploading music to TikTok in his home. But through a bizarre series of events, he now has a single listed in the top 10 Hot 100 for the entire decade, quickly catching up to other black swans in the same category. Now, if you look at a place like the Chelsea Hotel, an address which attracted and generated world-famous painters, poets, and punk rock pioneers, it makes one wonder why so many black swans come out of a single address, especially when these events are seemingly impossible to predict. I call this the collision effect. Not every person who entered the Chelsea Hotel would go on to be a world-famous painter, poet, or punk rocker. I would guess a percent would leave no real impact on culture at all. Yet some of the biggest playwrights, authors, musicians, and radical thinkers of the 20th century stemmed from this building. How is this possible? Well, it fits neatly into a very bizarre and philosophical idea of the black swan, and an idea that I have subscribed to throughout the course of my career. If you want predictable income, become a non-scalable tradesperson. Follow a path. Be an engineer, a barber, or even a doctor. You know that if you put X amount of work in, you get X dollars. It's linear. But in the world of media, if you can tinker long enough, collide with the right people, work with the geography around you, get lucky and collaborate with unlikely people, you just may become a black swan and generate an extremely unpredictable event. The future is highly unpredictable. If you're trying to be the next Little Nas X, cancel that plan. It's been done. If you're trying to create the next TikTok, Twitch, or create a Christian hip-hop album, this may not net the result that you were looking for. Others have already generated these extremely unpredictable events. I believe there's a way to philosophically approach how to invent new ideas. In this masterclass, we will look at the improbable as a destination. Welcome to Collisions, Unlikely Collaborations, and Why Geography is Destiny. Bleed or blow up is a phenomenon that doesn't sound pretty, and it isn't. I have experienced the bleed or blow up phenomenon in Jingle Punks, and it did exactly to me what it is described as. In 2016, a time when my business was doing extremely well, I was restless with how smooth things were going and I needed some disruption to get the blood flowing. I took a major gamble and decided to reinvest in a special project called The Bear and a Banjo. It was a long-term gamble that I was assuming would find a place in the market because of the sheer quality of its work. Simply put, it was a record I created with super producers Pooh Bear, Academy Award winner T-Bone Burnett, and Bob Dylan. Yes, that Bob Dylan. This album and my faith in traditional marketplace values failed me. It was a great album, but not one label wanted it. If you think the music business is a tough racket, consider this. Pooh Bear has streamed several billion singles as a result of writing some of Justin Bieber's biggest hits. Bob Dylan won the Nobel Prize for Literature and is generally regarded as the most innovative artist of all time. T-Bone Burnett has two Academy Awards, more Grammys than I can count, and his involvement in any album is a giant marketing get. Yet, with all this factored in, including my success, nobody was prepared to take a risk on something as unlikely as this concept. After several years of working on this record with this array of total losers and nobodies, I had the indignity of being sent a cease and desist order from my parent company telling me to write the project down. Business lingo for stop now or else. This was a bummer, to say the least, and something that shatters one's confidence in the creative process. 
Then, out of nowhere, through no strategy of my own, and through circumstances completely beyond my control, iHeart Network, one of my biggest clients, purchased a podcast network. This was my black swan moment. This album ultimately found a media partner and soft landing in the world of podcasting, and has redefined the genre of scripted musicals using a new medium entirely, one solely dependent on audio first. Wow, podcasts, who knew? This in turn has also created an open door for other music that I've created to live in the realm of podcasting and has converted into a 20 plus podcast commitment over the next five years with iHeart Network. Voila, bleed or blow up indeed. As I discovered, one margarita recouped all the so-called lemons. By waiting for the long game to unfold and continuing to tinker, I achieved financial results on this set of music that goes well beyond anything I could have achieved had I taken a traditional release and pray strategy. Plus, all the other items I've tinkered with up until now will now reap the perceived benefits of this bleed or blow up unlikely event. Much like Lil Nas X will now have a world eager to hear his other non-Old Town Road songs, many folks say I got lucky, but I don't see it that way. What if iHeart bought a podcast network, but I didn't make an album in the first place? There would be no luck. I was prepared. I had made something. Most somethings I've made in my career hipster orchestra, bear to banjo, and the mere outline and concept of jingle punks have turned into somethings along the way, and even made money. By making something, I was prepared. Opportunity certainly favors the prepared. A case of luck would be if I was randomly selected to create an album for the new podcast network with nothing in mind, but granted the budget and media irregardless of my created product. But this was not the case. In fact, several things happened previously to put me in a scenario to even be in a conversation with the new podcast network. How I even met the person who bought the project was certainly a black swan moment. Every step of the way, happy accidents, flukes, and what I like to call black swans have followed me on my path towards making stuff. Instead of being insular, I was prepared to collaborate with the universe around me by putting myself in positions for constant collisions with outside creators, decision makers, and money people. Along the way, I also realized that geography is destiny. The amount of arguments I've engaged in with my team surrounding the concept that no business has ever been closed through a phone call is staggering. It's something I stand by. To this day, by traveling from place to place, meeting people and having unique experiences with them, I've opened myself up for the likelihood of friendship, collaboration, and ability to grow and expand the offerings that Jingle Punks originally set out to create. When folks ask me what Jingle Punks does exactly, I simply say, we make music for stuff. Pretty simple plan. And making music for stuff is cool, but as you can see, that wasn't necessarily true, and it became much, much more. I say all of this to set the stage for our masterclass assignment, building a virtual Hotel Chelsea. The Hotel Chelsea amplifies some of the core concepts of black swan theory and was a destination of collisions, unlikely collaborations, and proved that geography is indeed destiny. The Hotel Chelsea has been the home of numerous writers, musicians, artists, and actors. Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey while staying at the Chelsea and musicians like Bob Dylan, Patti Smith, and the Ramones chose it as a place for philosophical and artistic exchange. Playwright Arthur Miller wrote a short piece, The Chelsea Effect, describing life at the Chelsea Hotel in the early 1960s. It has been the source of so many artistic boom and bust moments in the 20th century. But why? 